recording. And okay, so let's um let's get started here. And so we'll go through um, you know, as I was mentioning, going through the the relationship of eManage and QuickBooks and um, kind of show you how it, they work together. And basically what happens is even though, you know, uh, eManage is number one, is not an accounting system and we interface with QuickBooks and it's a pretty seamless interface. And, but even though we're using QuickBooks as the accounting system, eManage does 95 I would say 95% of the bookkeeping fun functionality. And so what I mean by bookkeeping fun functionality is you're going to do your estimate and your quotes and everything inside of eManage. And in fact, let's just, I got this project open and um, let's just kind of, let me close a couple windows here and let's just give a quick run, run through so you kind of see what I'm talking about. So this is a project that, uh, an actual project that we're working on, and it's a bid, and it's with the University of Hawaii, and um, this is the bid, it's access flooring and audience seating and so on, and down below here, these are all the contacts. And so you can see that I have, uh, you know, there's some vendors, I have an architect, I have a primary architect, here's my bill to, then these are, this is actually general contractors, and kind of the decision makers and so on. But I have all my project information, the salesperson that's working on it. And really, what in the, once you have the project information, then we're doing the quote for the um, customer. And I'm going all the way back to the quote so you can kind of see where this all starts because this is really the most important part of the relationship between eManage and QuickBooks is all of the items that you'll put in here, um, like all these parts. So when I do this quote to the customer, you know, we're going to have a series of parts. They're going to be chairs and desks and there'll be labor and freight and all those things. And what we do is every single part has, if I scroll across here, it has a product type. Okay, so this is KI seating auditorium. This is freight, and there's some more freight and some stack seating and so on. Now, what we do is in the background, and it's in the administrative program, um, we actually assign these um, product types to um, accounts, to QuickBooks, to the chart of accounts. I'll just show you this real quickly, and I just, I, you know, I just want to go through this. So when I start talking about the other things, that you'll, uh, it will make a little bit more sense, and then you'll be able to see, understand the connection. So under the product types, and I have a lot of product types, and generally you're 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 going to have a product type per, um, say, a Cogs account and so on and basically what we do here is if I go across this product type there's some columns over here so I have QuickBooks sales account so I have my sales account for furniture then I have my tax account and then I have my COGS account so COGS furniture and I have my WIP account which is WIP furniture and what we do is we set a corresponding COGS account for every single WIP account and the reason why we do that is we we fully automate WIP. So, um, are you guys? Do you guys do WIP right now, Gail? Yes, we do. Okay. So, at the end of the month, are are you reconciling WIP and and Cogs based, you know, with your in, what you've invoiced for the month? Um. There is a manual component where I go okay. through WIP to make sure that the balances are cleared out appropriately. Okay. So, and with with eManage, what we do, and I, and I'll, you'll see that as I go through, um, like when we add a bill or invoice, but you'll see that because eManage is not the accounting system, we've actually programmed the bookkeeper inside of the system. So it's going to do some journal entries. You'll see these journal entries and how it does it for you. So you don't have to do some of this manual, you know, any manual. It basically will automate it. 
But what it does is so every single part that we put into eMan, starting from the bill of materials, it it automatically has this product type. We'll assign this product type, and the product type has already been set for what what accounts that it's going to go to. So when we go and start processing orders and and um, creating purchase orders and everything, it's it's processing all those parts from the bill of materials, and all that stuff in the background has a connection. So the first thing, and I guess just kind of going through um, the process of a project, you know, we, we create the project, we do a quote, and then the customer signs off on it. And do you guys generally um, generally get um, a deposit from your customer or try yeah. to most of the time? Yeah, we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really the first transaction that happens when you get a – um, get an order is you get a customer deposit. So what happens with the customer deposit is inside of um, the customer invoice module of the project is we have this button down here and, and this one this one says uh, it's highlighted it says modify deposit that's because I have one already but there's another button here that says add deposit so if I was going to add a deposit I just click on it and what it will do is I can put in the amount, I can modify this in whatever way, but basically I put in the amount of what the deposit is, the date received, the paid by, and reference number, and then the account. I set the account that I want it to go to in QuickBooks. And all I do is save it. Now, so what happens there is inside of eManage is keeping track of the deposit, and then that deposit will push over to QuickBooks and it will go into that deposit account. Okay. Now, the second transaction that happens on the, on the finance side of it would be when you're creating purchase orders and maybe one of your vendors requires a, um, requires a uh, deposit. So sometimes, you know, your relationships, it depends really on, uh, you know, the, your major manufacturers, you're going to have credit and some of the guys, you know, ancillary stuff, they're going to say, hey, give me a 25 or 50% deposit. So on the vendor deposits, when we go into uh, the modules and we go to acknowledgements and costing, they see I would select that purchase order. Uh, for that manufacturer that requires that deposit and I would click this button to add deposit and I would enter in the percentage right here what it will do and let me open up an existing um, invoice here so you kind of see with some numbers but basically you'll put the percentage so if they um, required a 50% deposit all you do is enter 50 and then click this button to create deposit. And what that does is it creates a payable that will actually go into WIP. And it, so it journal entries into WIP, into QuickBooks, but it will create that payable so you can write that check to that vendor. Okay? Okay. Got it? Okay. Got it. So then the next thing is, and why I'm on this window, is you start, you know, as, um, you know, you'll, you'll send in a purchase order, you send to that deposit, and then you'll get an acknowledgement. So acknowledgements would be done, you know, um, whoever inside of the, you know, your office is doing acknowledgements. But if it's an ancillary um, manufacturer, you know, um, that you're creating, you have to email them an acknowledgement. Then they're going to email, or I'm sorry, you email them a purchase order. They're typically going to email you back an acknowledgement. So you would go in into this acknowledgements and add acknowledgement. You add the number and you basically acknowledge the items, saying that you're, it's correct to what you you ordered. Now with Herman Miller and Hayworth and all H and I um, and Kimball and National, actually you the acknowledgements coming through this batch entry. So the batch entry, you just download it um, and it reconciles itself. So you don't have to manually go in and add, add acknowledgements. So once you do the acknowledgements, 
then you're going to get a bill. Now, if you're, if you're one of the ancillary manufacturers, then you're going to get a bill and you're going to open, you're going to click on this button. You, I'm sorry. You're going to highlight the purchase order, click on the button down here to add an invoice. You're going to put the invoice number, the invoice date, due date, and the dollar amount. And then you're going to make sure that they're invoicing you for all the line items. You know, you'll, you'll confirm this. And then once you save that invoice, it automatically applies it and will send it to your WIP account. And if you notice here, it's split out furniture and freight based off of the items that um, are being invoiced. And this is, this account is automatically set, you know, based on the product type. Okay. So, and what it will do is it will show if there's any amount remaining, it will show it in here. So if they invoice you and it's not for the full amount, it will show that you have a balance that um, is, is still there. And so you'll, you'll have a record and I'll show you here in a second. Um, we have this grid over here called cash flow management. This is where you can manage, um, unbilled cost, which is basically you haven't received a bill for some of the items. And then also um, backlog dollars, that's money that you haven't invoiced the customer yet. So you'll be able to track that in here and I'll show you that in a second. So anyways, what happens is, you know, I just click on these drop downs and I save this invoice and it's all automatically mapped to go to the uh, appropriate account in QuickBooks. Now, for Herman Miller and Herman Miller Hayworth, H and I, Kimball National, um, you're not going to be doing manually entering these these invoices in. What you'll be doing is actually going to this batch entry, and really, I'm going to show you. Um, I have Hayworth enabled here, so let me just show you that. What happens is when you oh look at that, there's a whole bunch here. <laughs> what happens is when you download for Herman Miller, when you go in here and you click this download button, it's going to download all your acknowledgements, all your shipment notifications and all your invoices. And it's going to be in this grid and it will say XML type and it will say acknowledgement shipment or invoice. And all you have to do is select them all and you click process. And what that does is it's going to reconcile if it's an if it's an acknowledgement, it's going to reconcile the acknowledgement with your purchase order, and it will show you any deviation between that acknowledgement and that purchase order. If it's an invoice, it's going to reconcile that invoice to the acknowledgement that you received, and it will apply the bill. It will assign it to the appropriate account and create that payable for you. So you don't even have to go into the project and uh, add an invoice. So that's a total automated um, function with, uh, you know, Her Herman Miller and Hayworth and h and I, I think does invoices as well. Um, Kimball National may not process invoices, but they do acknowledgements. So, Anyways, that comes through and it's, it's all automatically applied and reconciled. Now, the next part of it is then creating an invoice um, to your customer. So under the customer invoices in the project is your, all your orders. So there's one order on this project. If you had multiple orders, then it will show multiple orders, but you select the order and then you go down here and click the button for new invoice. And I have a couple of invoices here and one is a progress payment. Then one was a final payment. And this is kind of where you'll see, I'm just going to open this final payment and you're going to, you're going to see all these journal entries. Okay. So what happens is, in, in here, this is not how the invoice is going to look to the customer. In fact, let me show you that. When I send the invoice to the customer, and I print this selected, this is what the invoice looks like to the customer. 
okay so this customer the all they wanted was it's one basically one line item and a description and a full dollar amount okay and you have a choice to either do it as kind of a lump sum amount like this is or you could do it by line item so you have a choice on how you want that invoice to look right inside of eManage and that that's in your order entry and so in our order I'm sorry what's that's that order that's order specific order yes order specific so what happens is on this order entry when I go to process I click this button to process from the from the BOM the bill of materials it's going to ask me if I want to process it by line item or do I want to process it by the tag which is we call it a phase but it's the tag so as an example maybe I group my quote to the customer and I say conference room here's a my tag and then I have um, admin office is another tag I have cafeteria another tag and so on under each tag are a whole you know series of line items and there could be hundreds of line items so I can I have an option to process them showing all the line items or summarizing it and it's just one click when I click on this the process no it's already saying I I did this so I can't process it again I already invoiced it but it will um, give me an option by line item or by phase which is the tag so this one we did it by the face so when I go back to my invoice when I when I print that invoice that's what it looks like to the customer now what we're doing behind the scenes here this is all the behind the scenes and this is really that that relationship between uh, eManage and QuickBooks is because we have all those parts and pieces assigned to product types and then those product types assigned to a COGS account and a corresponding WIP account and then also sales accounts, this is where all those entries are being made. So we're making right here all the WIP. So we have this WIP here and this WIP up here is being journal entried into COGS. And then I have my sales accounts. So then it's summing everything up and putting the amount into sales. Now, and this is based off of, right now, I did this based off of 100% of the, um, I'm invoicing 100%, but if I wanted to, I can change this percentage, and actually, you know what, I think this would be a good example of that. Let me open this one. So this was based off of a, di a different percentage, but when you change the percentage, it will recalculate and it will it will adjust the WIP entries in the COGS based off the percentage amount that you're invoicing. So it's always it's basically penny for penny um, based off of the amount that you're invoicing for, and based on and that will uh, journal entry the percentage amount from WIP into COGS. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So when you come in here and I create a new invoice, I don't have to manually assign all these accounts. Because we did all that work up front in a, assigning the accounts to the product types, that these entries are already done. So when I create an invoice, the only thing I'm doing is I'm selecting the invoice billing type, and then basically I'm saving and printing and that's it um, it will automatically apply the invoice the deposit invoice and if you notice here so it made that journal entry and took this uh, dollar amount the deposit dollar amount out and it's in sales so it automatically made that journal entry as well so you don't have to go and make those journal entries or, or anything now let me show you real quick what happens here is so inside of eManage when I said you know 95% of the bookkeeping functionality you're going to be doing in, in here and that's basically your customer deposits you'll be entering into eManage 
any vendor deposits you'll be entering into eManage. All your vendor bills will be entered into eManage. All your customer invoices will be entered into eManage. And then also your customer payments. So a customer payment is all you do is you right click and apply payment. And what it does is it will pop up and it will show you the amount of the invoice and then you select what they're paying by and you put a reference and then you save and done. Okay. So, and all the payments are put in there. Now, the way the information we do have, um, a step between eManage and QuickBooks and this is kind of a, uh, a, a step so we can control when things go over and what you want to go over and and so on but under this main tool menu and QuickBooks this is the QuickBooks integration and it opens up as a separate separate program and that is so you can start to control what you want to go over and when you want to go over it. and you can also re it's a, a way to review items before they go over um, and one of the things why we do that is inside, as I was mentioning with the um, bills, with Herman Miller, you know, it's a download and it automatically will uh, apply your vendor bill. So what we recommend is that the person that's downloading acknowledgments should just download the invoices and click apply at the same time. And then when you're, when you're ready to push them over, you could go into, let me see if I have any uh, payables here. No, I don't. It doesn't look like I have any payables. I have something in here. Let me see some receivables. So basically what happens is up here, these are your project modules. You have deposits, receivables, payments, and payables. So you'll go in here and then if, if this was payables, then you would go in here and you can review them. You could either click and expand it and see where the accounts, what they're assigned to, um, or you can actually double click on this and it will open up that invoice window. And if you did make an adjustment, you can make an adjustment, but you shouldn't have to, but you at least be, would be able to see it before you send it over. So at this point, I can select as many as I want, and I'll just select two of these, and I click Send to QuickBooks. And then what it does is it sends it to QuickBooks, and it makes that entry. And so in a second here, I'm going to, this will clear. And then we'll go into QuickBooks and I'll show you what it looks like in QuickBooks. Um, but if you notice here at the top, we have project modules. We have service tickets, service agreements, inventory payables, other payables, payroll, and then these are imports. So if, you ha if you're an existing QuickBooks user, we can import your information uh, directly from QuickBooks into eManage. So you notice that those two are gone and this one is still there. So it pushed that, uh, these receivables into QuickBooks. And in fact, you know what, let's do this because I actually have a, pay, a payable here for this project. And I want to show you, a, a, there's another way of um, entering bills and payments. Rather than going into every single project and then clicking on a new payment or right clicking and applying a payment, you can actually go into this batch entry and I can click on any of these, you know, uh, customer invoice for projects, customer payments, vendor bills for projects, even vendor bills for general. So if you, if you have to pay bills like rent or any kind of overhead and things like that, you can actually enter those into eManage and they're not project related, but it just, if you're entering bills, all the project bills, we give you a way to just stay in eManage and enter your bills. And kind of a side benefit of that is if you enter all your bills through eManage, eManage keeps a log 
If you ever had a problem with your accounting system with QuickBooks, like something got corrupted or lost or whatever, you can actually call eManage support and say, you know, uh, can we rebuild my QuickBooks, my accounting system? And basically we can push all the history back over and recreate your entire accounting system if you enter everything through eManage. So I have a, a payment. And in fact, I'm going to show you this payment here. Um, this payment is right here. So I got this check and it's from Brian's contracting. So I scanned it in. And what I want, what I want to show you is that I'm going to take this um, payment and whoops, I want to, I got it on my other screen here. But I'm going to attach this to a project. I want to attach it to that project so I have a copy of the payment. So here, let me bring this back over here. And I can do it a few ways. I'm basically doing a save as. I'm going to save this as a PDF. And I'm going to save it to uh, my documents. And I have eManage1 upload the record. And final check. And I'm going to save it. Okay, and then I can close this document. Now, what will happen here in just a second, a little window is going to pop up. And this is the um, eManage uploader. And so you can see the final check.pdf. And I'm going to attach it to this job and document type. And I'm going to put this in customer invoice and set the value. So now I have a copy of that physical check that's attached to this project. So if I go to the history on this project and view documents, then I can see that under customer invoice, here's that final check. So uh, anyone that has access to this project, this check will be there and it's going to be there forever. You can't delete it or get rid of it, but you have that. So you have a copy of that check. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that check. And in fact, I should keep this open so I can apply the payment. And one of the things that I want to, that's um, kind of cool about this, uh, what I'm going to show you here is this batch payment window. I'm selecting the company and the customer, which is Brian's contracting, and enter. So in this window, I can just, when I hit enter, it's gonna show the open invoices, okay? And it shows the balance. So I have a balance of $5,815, and I have a check here that's $5,815. So I'm gonna put the amount, so 5815 and the reference number is 2680 and the receive date is today and paid by is check and then I'm the what they did is they sent me one check for both of these invoices so I'm going to apply and if you notice once I check that box and apply it's going to say the amount that I applied and the remaining balance. And then I'm going to check this one and apply. And now I have no remaining balance. And I click on this to process payment. And I'm at zero. Hey, can I press an emergency? What did I do? I wonder if I clicked in there. It is zero. Hello. <laughs> did I, am I missing, did I miss something here? Apply. Let me do this one more time. I think I clicked in and out of something. Let me go back in here and do that again. What did I do? 
Oh, let's see how fast this is to do it. Brian's contracting the amount 5815. Don't forget to press enter. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. Okay, let's do that. There's my amount. There's my reference. And date received is today. And my check and both of those guys. And apply. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. Everything's right. Okay, well, let's try this. Well, I'll come back to that. I don't know why it's doing that, but it should apply. Because apply, that's the amount, the remaining balance is zero, and that doesn't matter. And, oh. <laughs> Okie doke. I put the remaining balance as zero and it, it sent over. <laughs> okay, well it processed. And so now if I uh if I close the invoices here and open back up, then uh everything is paid. So here's the outstanding receivables as zero. So everything's been paid. So it updated everything in eManage, and if I go back to my pay, uh, payments, now I should have, oh, I got two payments. Yep, there's are the two payments for two checks, and I select those, and I send to QuickBooks. And now the, the payments are applying to QuickBooks. So really, all this work, you know, you can have different people within the company doing different things. So it, you can have people creating invoices inside of eManage, um, and then you can send them over when you want to send them over, okay? Um, also on payables, what happens is when you send payables over, eManage will ask you to check for paid, for paid bills, and it will get the paid date in QuickBooks when you actually pay it, and it will put it into eManage. So you can see in, in eManage when the actual pay date when you wrote that check. So it will process that. Okay, so now let's go into eMan or into QuickBooks. And what I did here is here's that Brian's contracting. So here's their record, and then this is their project. This is the project. So if I click on this, you'll notice that in the job, let me move some of this over. In the job, you're gonna see there's those, here's those two payments I just made, okay? And here's the invoices. And if I click on this invoice, this invoice is gonna look exactly like that invoice in eManage. So all, what eManage does and why, and this is kind of why we can, we'll support a company that's doing 500 million a year, no problem, with QuickBooks. And it's because QuickBooks, had, QuickBooks runs into a problem when you start to have a lot of items. But what we're doing is all those items reside in eManage and we're summarizing the all the, the dollar amounts of those items into the accounts that they need to be entered in. And so on our, when you look at the, the invoice in QuickBooks, you're never gonna send this invoice to your customer, but you can see this is exactly the same entries that are in eManage. So eManage is just pushing the summary information into QuickBooks. And then it's done. So you pay, then you'll go in here and you pay your bills. So you can see that this, you know, uh, this has been paid. Um, you'll have your vendor bills and you'll just write your checks. And then in QuickBooks, you're going to run all your reports. You know, you run your, your uh, P and L and you'll run your balance sheet and everything is based off of these journal entries going over. And if you use QuickBooks payroll, which is, um, I'll just touch on that really quick. 
but eManage has a time cart or time clock. And there's a couple different time clocks, but this is the easiest one to just show you right now. You can see I have these three people that are clocked in. And here's their timesheet. So all they do is they use the, they just click on current time, current time, and so on. And then our installation guys, let me go to uh, an installer and click on, here's a pay sheet for them. And installers, their time is logged to a job. So all they do is they select whichever job it is. And then they clock in and clock out and so on. And what it does is it makes a job costing entry to the project. And it will also push, push this information over to QuickBooks and do job costing in QuickBooks as well. But same uh, in the QuickBooks integration, this is where you do pay, uh, send payroll. So you send your timesheets and you send commissions to pay uh, salespeople. So timesheets, all I would do is select them and then just send to QuickBooks. So I just ran payroll yesterday. So, uh, but all you do is just select them and then send. And it makes all those entries into um, QuickBooks and then all you just, you, you tell QuickBooks to um, pay checks. And then it does it, then we have it set up for a direct deposit as well and it does all the direct deposit. And if you notice here, there's vacation, um, there's also, uh, oops, get back to eManage. Under eManage and the human resources, you can enter in um, sick days and uh, vacation days. So it will tell you how many are available and how many are used for a particular employee. But when you, when you add um, a sick day so you can say you know it's a sick day and you can put if you're paying them for that day you would select the hours and any reason and verify it and then you save it and if it's a paid holiday then you just click this button and it's gonna apply an entry for every single employee create a timesheet for that paid holiday based off of the the eight hours or whatever the hours are and then that will push over into QuickBooks right here. You just send it. And if you need to make any adjustments, I could change this, the pay schedule right here and make those adjustments. And I select it and send it. And it shows up in the QuickBooks uh, under employees. And if I look at their weekly timesheet and I go to, let's go to an employee and you can see the entry. Let's go to last week. And here's two projects that uh, this installer worked on. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was on this project. And then Friday was on this project. And then all you do is you just go to uh, employees and you go to your payroll center. And then this is where you run payroll. And sorry, go ahead. You got a question? I do. Could the module in eManage just be used for tracking the time that people yes. take or use? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you don't if you don't use QuickBooks payroll and you use a different payroll, mm -hmm. um, you you still use the time clocks in eManage. You'll still use the commission module in, in eManage, and then you can run your reports. And inside of here, you could do a commission payable report. And then under um, human resources, you could run a payroll report. And so if I did a payroll report, say just for this week, and run that, that will create the payroll report and it groups it by the different, you know, I have my installation group and uh, my support group and it will run that. So you have that report, but if you use um, a pay service, we do have a way to, um, you can, uh, the audit date you select, um, you could select the employees over here, and then you can run the, uh, a report based off of, 
a date range and even a pay schedule or whatever and you will search that report and here's that report and then what you can do is you can export this um, right from here so I don't have this set up I don't use this so that's why that's not working but basically you'll export this to a file and then you can import that into your um, service So, what do you what do you think? You you have any questions on on how that I works? Lots of questions, but I want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um. Well, does that kind of you got a better understanding of how eManage works with QuickBooks a little bit better? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so the the all your the majority of what you're going to be doing is an eManage. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, like I said, you'll put your your uh, customer deposits, any vendor deposits, your vendor bills, your payments, and you know all that stuff will be entered into eManage. And you have a, a couple ways of doing it. You enter it either on the project, or you could do it in this batch entry. And if I was going to do bills, um, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. So I can search for, actually, let me click out of there. It says, choose a purchase order, all POs on active projects listed here. Now, if I click on this arrow, I can search by any of this information. So I can type Hayworth. I can type uh, service. I can type... Um, let's see let's see if i have i can start typing a customer name or i think i even type um a salesperson or even a project number one six eight oops okay one six eight two eight and then all i do is i select that um, the order and it opens it and these are all the um, line items that, that from the acknowledgement and then this is who the the bills to so all I do is just type in a number and then once I do this I just save and new and then I it will create a new you know this will go blank and then I can just type in the next project number or vendor and then save and new and do the next one, save and new, save and new. So you can sit there with a stack of bills and just enter it in all at one time. Yeah, can you search by per, um, PO number? Yep. So PO number, yeah, actually this first number here, let me click on that. This is actually the PO number. 15943-10 is the PO number. Mm -hmm. And then the 15943 is the job number. So the PO number is always the job number dash whatever number it is in line for the PO. So you can see this, you look at all the POs just for this one project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it goes up to 37 purchase order, or 41. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So the payables get captured in eManage regardless of whether they are trade or non-trade. Yeah. And then the actual payment is cut through QuickBooks. Yes. When you pay bills. So basically we're QuickBooks is your general ledger. That's where your PL is going to be, and and that's where you're going to write checks. Okay. Everything else you'll be doing inside of eManage. At least anything project related is all done in eManage. Okay. You can still, if it's not project related, then you can enter it directly in the QuickBooks. Okay. Yeah. But it's fairly, you know, it's fairly simple, right? You know, if, I, I think one of the things is just to, 
it's the understanding of what goes where mm -hmm. and, and how it's going there. But really when, once you get your bill of materials, once that's done, then things are just clicks, you know, um, it's a series of clicks, like, you know, to add a deposit, you click on it and you fill out a couple drop downs and hit save. Because it's going to put, if you have, um, if it's a 50% deposit, if that's your terms, it's automatically going to put the, the, the dollar amount based off your terms. And then you're just clicking the date. The, in fact, I think it even puts today's date in there. And then you'll select the, the chat, you know, what type of, uh, what it's being paid by and the account and they hit save. Then when you make a, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, there was a little box that said sick, um, send to QuickBooks. Yes. So once that's ticked, it would be going in as a batch. By default, it is checked. Okay. Yeah. By default, it's always going to be checked. And, you know, the reason, so we give, and again, we can do things that, um, because we're not an accounting system, we could do different things. And that's actually a good example. So this is send to QuickBooks is by default. If I open up an invoice, you're also going to notice in here, show as QuickBooks receivable and sent to, to accounting. So this is showing as receivable and, and it has been sent. So you can see that now there. And the reason for that is you may, I don't know, some people say, get me an invoice now. So it's end of the year. I'm going to pay for it, but you don't want to push that over to QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So you could create the invoice and uncheck this and then just create that invoice and then, you know, either track it in um, your aging and e-manage or you could just delete the invoice, but it's not being pushed over. Um, even on, oh, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. So I noticed on that screen you had a class. Yes. That was uh, Sales Oahu. Yes. Yep. So is that for different department tracking? Yeah. So here's, now we, we use classes um, for certain things and I generally don't, I don't, I don't like classes, but we do it because our taxes, we, we have to track it differently for tax purposes. So ta when you use classes, classes actually are a manual step that you have to do. So it's not automated, but all you do is you select them and you right click and then you add the class and done. So um, I have, we, we have a customer, that uses classes to separate out, um, they just, they want to track profitability of different sections of their business. Mm -hmm. It, it makes it a little bit, you know, it just adds an, an, another step of having to add a class than, um, then not, but that's fine. If you want to and you use classes to separate out, then you can. And it's nice because then you could go into your, um, your P&L and your balance sheet and you can break it out and say, I want to run this based off of class. And it will show you, you know, the total, the summary of everything, but then it will spread it out by class. So you can see just the, um, what they were doing, why they want to do it is they, they assign overhead costs to different areas of their business. And so they broke that out by class. And so you can see the overhead expenses per, per class. Okay, so if I wanted a separate P&L, for example, for just our product revenue and that revenue stream, um, and then a separate one for service, would we have to use classes or is there no, a way? I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use classes. I would, what I would use is I would just have a different account. So as an example, like I have furniture and then I have miscellaneous job expense. And those are two different accounts. My miscellaneous job expense is like, um, 
my it's my overhead i it's a charge that i put on the job for project management design it's just some overhead um costs that i put in there and so i just created a separate account for that rather than using a class because i'm already using a class for the islands oahu see one of the here's actually how it should be set and i'll probably one of the things is, you know, with my accounting, you know, we've been using eManage for 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of changes, obviously, in the software in 14 years. So the way we set it up way back 14 years ago, um, there's different ways of doing things. And one of the things that I noticed is, well, one of the things that I like to do is try to simplify as much as possible. If the majority of our business is done on Oahu. So my, what my recommendation is to, to my accounting department, and we'll, we'll, we're going to change this at some point. We just haven't changed it is if it's Oahu, don't sign in a class, don't sign a class. Mm -hmm. If it's everything else, then assign a class because this is, if, 90% of my business is done on Oahu, then why do, why am I making this a manual step? Why don't I make that 10% the manual step and go and set the class for that? So whatever's not classified is Oahu and whatever is classified is not. So that's the way I see it, but they okay. want to see it this way. So, <laughs> whatever it, it only takes a you know two seconds to do but as if you can see one of the things to think about with that is say on um oh here yeah here's a perfect example on payables you know if 80 percent or even 60 percent of your business is herman miller and you want to create a payable, you know, class for a payable um, for whatever reason, whether it's different taxes or whatever. Don't, don't create a class for that, for that manufacturer, especially Herman Miller. Herman Miller, Hayworth, you know, H&I, whatever. Anyone who automatically applies invoices, um, because you're going to have to go into your, uh, whoops, where is it? You're going to have to go into your, your payables and you're going to have to grab that payable and you're going to have to open it up every, on every single payable. You're going to have to select it and you're going to have to right click and you're going to have to select, set the class. And it's so automated already. Why that, would you want to do that? Yeah, why would you want to do that? And what's yeah. funny about it is that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're changing that right now. I was just talking with my, my county person. I'm like, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. But also, I didn't even know we were doing that because I don't get involved in the accounting every day. And she was actually gone for a week and a half. And so I did... I did all the bills, I did all the receivables, I did all the payroll. And so as I went through and I did it myself, I was, I was like, why are we doing this? So anyways. Well, we're, we're, oftentimes when <laughs> someone different does the task, that's when those questions come up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah because you're so used to doing it and it, it's like, um, you know, you, you're – you're like a machine. It's like, boom, you just get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. You know, and also there's changes in eManage. You know, we're, we're constantly making, um, making things easier and better. And, you know, maybe you missed that release note. You know, we put all the releases um, right here under the release notes. So any update, you'll get a release note. And so, you know, we, here's some enhancements, you know, there's a sales tax rate updated, you know, you may have not read this or maybe you forgot about it. So mm -hmm. it's good to go back and look at these things, but 
so I'm because I'm so involved, obviously, with the manage that I read through all this stuff. And once I see something new, I implement it. You know, I do it right then. And uh, and maybe, you know, my other people in the office aren't don't. So I will go and check on it and say, hey, are we doing this? Did we do this? Mm -hmm. But yeah, every single update that we've had for years is in here. Yeah. But yeah, anything else? I'm going to leave it at that for today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can shoot me an email. Yeah, yeah, it was a great session. Thank you very much. Yeah, what did you think? What What's your feelings with um, what you saw? Oh, I'm still excited about the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> you think it's going to help to uh, simplify some of you guys' processes? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it will. I think um, there's probably some really good best practices that will come out of implementation. Uh -huh. And there will be some process changes in a lot yeah. of way as well. Definitely. What do you think is the... Um, the most exciting thing that you can see getting out of it? Probably the automation. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, one of the things that we, we say is, you know, if you, you follow our recommendations and you follow the process and you, you, you use eManage how it's designed, and and you're just going to fly through things it's going to it's going to significantly change the way you guys do business that you know on how easy it is well and, and i like the amount of information that's at your fingertips oh yeah you, know, you click on on that one project and it's all there rather than right toggling between the modules or right you know i didn't you know show you yeah yeah everything's there it's all in one place you know i'm going to show you this real quick and then uh, uh but this cash flow management because we're we're keeping track of all the detail and all this stuff one of the things that's amazing is this is every single open project every single open order um, not project it's order because you can have multiple orders per project and basically, it is going to stay on this list until you receive all the money you are owed and you pay all the money that you owe. And once it zeroes out, it drops off of this list. But, and in this list is I can double click on any one of these or I can right click and go to any of the modules right from here. Okay. But in this grid, you know, I have the job number, salesperson, project name, order name, all this stuff. But this is where it gets just amazing. So I can look, I can see the order status. I can see what the sale was, the product cost, what invoices are out. You know what I've what I've invoiced for. I can see available deposits like down here's an available deposit so this is still in the deposit account and then applied deposits so these are what have moved over so that means i've probably invoiced for final but this is where it gets just crazy this is backlog dollars backlog dollars is this is the money you have not invoiced for you know you have a sale amount so i have a sale of three hundred three thousand dollars, but I have zero invoices, so I have backlog dollar of three hundred three thousand. If I look here, I have a sale of seventy five thousand. I've invoiced for sixty seven, and I also have the deposit. And this is what I didn't invoice yet, and this is my percentage of that sale that I haven't invoiced yet. And then this is the other column, unbilled cost. Unbilled cost is I've created a purchase order for $175,000 and I have not received a bill for it. 
and it will this will update it starts with purchase orders and then it starts to go with um, acknowledgements because your acknowledgements purchase orders is an, is an estimate then acknowledgements is your your next estimate and then your actual is your bill so then you have a projected GP this is what based off of your sale and based off of your bills this is what it's projecting but this is what you estimated in your bill of materials and it will show your profit margin and then your estimated margin and then the the other amazing thing here oops i went too far uh available to product. right here is the where did my variants go did I go too far? Estimated, projected, estimated margin, sales credit, outstanding receivables, and it will show a variance between your estimate and your uh, actual. Uh, also, any unpaid bills, here's your paid bills, your estimated cost, your inventory cost, journal cost, this would be things for like um, parking or so on. Like, let's look at it. This. this is $252 of journal costs. And let's just go into my final profit and loss on this project. And this final profit and loss is really awesome. So right here, you can it starts to sale and tax and invoices, deposits, and any uh, product cost labor cost, and then here's those journal costs, and total cost, gross profit before paying commissions, and then the profit after paying commissions, and then I ha actually have an employee cost. So journal cost is travel expenses, entertainment, parking, delivery, credit card, and so on. So these, you, you just enter in in this batch, and it's right under journal cost. And they can be, what's nice about this, is you can assign it to an order or an opportunity. So maybe it's not even an order yet, but you wanna start compiling costs because maybe you're trying to get a job with a customer and you're having to go to their to the customer site, you bought pastries and you have parking, you had to buy fit, you know, finished samples, whatever, you can start to accumulate those costs to that opportunity. So again, same thing, you could search by the name, opportunity number, whatever, and then you set it for what type, you know, miscellaneous, job supply, travel, parking, whatever you want the date, and then these are the, you know, you have to, uh, your credit and debit accounts, and then the amount, and you can put a note, and you can make it commissionable or not, and then you save it. If it's not, uh, if you're not gonna, um, uh, what was I gonna say here? Yeah, so uh, orders, opportunities, or even vendors, if you wanna apply that cost to a vendor, you can do that too. But anyways, it's a way to get some information in here. Um, and one thing also to take note of is this employee cost. You do nothing to get that. That's just people, um, that's just, this isn't even coming from the timesheet. This is actually coming from people logging into eManage. Mm. So if you notice here, you see all this employee cost? If I go into my human resources and let's pull up, oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's pull up, um, Christian. Under pay rates, if I click on standard pay, so I have my pay rate, it's $18 an hour, and this is overtime. This is actual. Actual is their hourly pay plus the taxes and benefits that we pay for this employee. So we enter in this actual. Now what this does is if an employee logs into eManage and they click on this project and start working on it, 
it starts logging to, it's basically creating a project um, timesheet. Mm -hmm. Every time, every, and if I click on here, then I click away, it closed the timesheet. If I click back, it creates a new timesheet. And it takes a duration, and it takes their employee cost uh, and divides it out by the based on a duration. So what's what's really amazing about this is this doesn't go to, onto your books or anything like that, mm -hmm. but you can see how much time your employees are spending and what it's costing you. And the important thing is, is on my day planner, and this is going to take a second to open up, a day planner is um, per um, – employee profile but i have oh here let's take this one opportunity loss last week i can see here what the approximate value was and the internal cost now this is zero zero it's a duplicate project so they accidentally created a duplicate project but i can quickly see how much cost we have we you know how much it cost me to lose that job right and if I have that consistently happening for a particular customer, then I can say, you know what, we need to fire that customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, it's just really cool. That's just something that eManage does in the background. Just an added side benefit. So. Is there any way to just really quickly see the commission module? Oh, yeah. Or is absolutely. that opening a can of worms? <laughs> no, not actually, no. Our commission module is really is really simple so let's let me go back let me close this did i have that other project open let me let me go back to one of these other projects that are in there uh oh yeah what's this one okay so let me let me show you what commissions are real quick inside of inside of here so inside the eManage administrator, so we have a separate program called the administrator, and this is where you, you know, you set up all that kind of stuff like commissions. So, and this is super simple. Basically, it starts with commission plan, and you give it a name, okay? And so I have all these that are different names. Some of them are commission plan one, direct sale, non-direct sale, and then I also have, you know, employee names, okay? So once I click on it, oh, there's nothing there. Let's get to, okay, commission plan one. What I did is I said, between a profit margin of 10% and 100%, I'm paying 20% commission. And then I said, you know, I must've been playing around with this. I said, between 10% and 20% profit margin, I'm gonna pay a 5% commission. So all you do is, you know, I can put uh, maybe it's 5% and 10%, I'm going to pay a 2% and I add, okay? So you can make a graduated scale or just have a single amount. So if I clicked on from 10% to 100%, I'm going to pay 15% commission and that's based off of the profit, okay? Profit or sale, okay? okay? Now, if I was going to do, uh, oh, and then what I can do is once, once I create a commission plan, it's available to everybody, but I can set it as a default per salesperson. So if I have a default commission plan for the salesperson, then I'll just check it off and say this is a default commission plan. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now if I wanted to create a, um a new commission plan and do you guys do a graduate or, or do you guys do a point for point uh we have a point for point plus okay and then we have fixed okay so we do a point or a point for point basically all you're doing is creating the um you know whatever the commission commission plan is called and you check this box and you say use profit margin as commission rate. Okay. 
So basically, if it's a it's a one percent profit margin, they get a one percent commission. They, if it's a fifteen percent margin, they get a fifteen percent commission. Okay. Is there a way to add a couple of more points onto that? If you're going to do something custom more than that, then you would mm -hmm. you would have to enter it down here. You know, like um, if you were doing a one to one and that's 1.5 you know you may have to just add the scale down here oh i see okay yeah okay so yeah you know it's it's gonna take you know you have to sit here and enter it all in mm -hmm. but once you do it once then it's done so when you're in eManage now let me get back into eManage and let's go to modules and we'll go down here to commissions. And here's the salesperson. And I click on this button to pay, schedule payment. And it will say she has a default commission plan or I can change the commission plan if I want to. But based off of it, it's this customer order or I can have multiple orders. And this is showing the commission on profit. This is the profit margin, and here's the percentage, and here's the amount. And so all I do is I set the date when I want to pay, and then I'll set the type. And I put a note, and then I hit schedule. And it creates that, the it schedules it for payment. Now, if I wanted to, I can change the commission plan, or I can even change the dollar amount here or i can just or i'm sorry i could change the commission percentage or i can change the commission amount like maybe i agreed you know what i'll pay you you know an extra twenty eight hundred dollars on this i can just type it in if i wanted to so you can manually change this however you want and and so when you select the individual the, yep. the individual salesperson the customer orders that are eligible for commission at this point in time would all be available through the drop down. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there'll be more, uh, there's a, and if there's multiple salespeople on this project, then it will show, um, each salesperson and it will break the commission out based off of their pay, their commission percentage, and also based off of their um, sales credit right here. You know, cause you can, you know, two salespeople could be working on a job and maybe it's a 70, 30. Mm -hmm. So okay. it will also break that out. And then when you want to, if you're not, you know, the salespeople can even go into their report, go to reports and run a commissional payable report. And they will only see their commissions. They don't see anybody else's. And they can run a report. So if I went and let's just run a report. Well, let's see if I have, I don't know if I'm gonna have anything. Because it's probably scheduled for later. Oh, well anyways, there. Yeah, so it does it by salesperson. And so if a salesperson ran this, they would only see theirs. And then you can see, uh, it will be checked off if it's been paid. So if you're going to do this, then you can just, um, if you have an outside pay payroll uh, service. Yeah, we do. We yeah, do. so you just run this report. You click on this um, email icon, yeah. and you can rename this if you want to, and click next. And then you'll just type in the you know the person's name and who you want to send it to. And there's the report. And you can type in a subject, type in a little note and hit send. And it will save this email. It's saving this email with this commission report to this person's record in eManage. So if you ever needed to, if they said, oh, I didn't get that report or your report was wrong or whatever, you can go right to that person and you can look up 
go in here and I could go to hi history and documents. I can see every single email and every single document that I've ever sent this person. So it's all there. Very cool. Yeah, isn't it? I still only think we're scratching the surface, but. Oh my gosh, we actually, <laughs> yeah, we actually are only scratching the surface, but. Yeah. But it's a, it's a very robust system. It's a, there's a, for how big the system is and how robust it is, it's actually very user friendly. You know, there's a lot to it and it can look complicated, but we try to make it look, you know, as, as simple as possible, you know, and just make the processes, the steps as simple as possible. So. But very cool, huh? Very cool. Yes. Nice. I will let you go this time. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. You know, obviously I, I love talking about the software. <laughs> And um, yeah, you send me an email, you know, if there's any information, uh, any questions you have or anything else you want to see, we can always uh, do another, you know, do a quick meeting or another meeting, whatever. Okay. And go over it. That's great. Thank you both for your time today. Oh, you're welcome. I think Stephanie had to jump off and get into a meeting. So uh -huh. she, yeah, she's gone. But um, yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad we uh, were able to spend some time and go over this. Great. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. And All right. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Okay. You too. Thanks, Gail. Take care. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye.